Michelle Miller from CBS Saturday Morning. Welcome to The Dish. Today we travel across the pond to dine at four London restaurants celebrating Britain's diverse culture. We meet a culinary force honoring diversity in dining through a fusion of Asian, African, and European flavors. Then prepare your palate for classic dishes cooked by real Italian moms at one London eatery. And a chef who infuses dishes of the African diaspora with flavors from his native Ghana. But first, we sit down with a music producer turned restaurateur who's cultivating the ultimate jam session, a remix of Scottish seafood infused with Spanish flavors. Stephen Laroni's culinary symphony takes place at his South London restaurant, Moresco. Stephen Laroni runs his restaurants. He owns three, doing whatever it takes. Any job that needs doing, I'll, I'll, I'll try and do it. Job titles mean little to him. But you are the owner. I'm the owner. Restaurateur. Restaurateur. All those big fancy words. Yeah. yeah. Janitor. Not so fancy. Neither is Moresco. A small open aired seafood spot located in London's vibrant Soho neighborhood. I really love the concept that you're sitting here in a bar, you either are looking at the kitchen mm -hmm. or you're looking out at the street. Well, I tell you, at night when it's a warm evening mm. and the windows are all open, it's. Oh, nice. Yeah, oh, that's so that's nice. Beautiful. This place blends Spanish heart with Scottish soul. What is it about Scottish seafood that makes the food sing? Basically, it's, it's a simple thing. It's the quality of the water. The water's deep, it's cold, and it's a perfect breeding ground for great produce. Its seafood is exported solely, no pun intended, from Scotland, prepared exclusively by native Spaniards. I put in my soul in this place to make it work. That begins with Chef Ivan Martinel. He let me be, you know? I think he trusts me and he knows what I'm doing and that's the most important thing for me. And then I feel like I can do whatever I want. This whole cross-cultural theme stems from Laroni's memories of childhood vacations. We used to drive from Glasgow to Spain. It would take two days. And I remember seeing the, uh, the Mediterranean Sea for the first time, it's just like, wow. And a life-changing newspaper article on the popularity of Scottish seafood on the Iberian Peninsula. Who knew? When did I you discover this? I was working on a Hans, the second Hansen record. Yep, that Hansen. Laroni used to work in California in the music business, a lifelong passion. I started when I was 11 as a drummer. It was the only thing I cared about then, you know, was, was music, playing guitar, and being in bands. He played with Altered Images, where he met his wife of now 40 years, Claire Grogan, and later moved behind the scenes, producing the likes of the aforementioned Hanson and John Bon Jovi on his second solo album. But by the early 2000s, Laroni saw that times were changing. The music business is so hard and became almost impossible with the invention of the MP3. He moved back to England. I think you get to a certain age where you go, what do I really like doing? Drinking wine and eating. It's my wife's favorite wine from uh, Ribeiro. That apparently was enough. Thanks to his hiring of impressive talent like Chef Pablo Rodriguez, his first success came with their partnership, Bar Esteban, where Tapas was elevated to fine dining. His second, Escocesa, became an institution. Since November 2022, he's given Moresco's a whirl. Okay, one, two, three, guys. Giving us a taste of locked broom oysters and gazpacho. That's really good. Locked wort salmon tartare with mm. ajo blanco and cucumber. Mm. It's just a clean yeah, yeah. texture yeah. and fresh, man, mm. so fresh. A Canary Island-inspired cauliflower with cilantro-infused mojo verde and a Catalonian empadrat salad. 
Each dish he likes to chase. Oh, ooh, not sweet at all. No, With his favorite palate cleanser. No matter what you're eating, sherry will make it taste better. Really? Ready for the house specialty, a Chistora fish sausage with spicy yogurt and tallow. I love it. Man, it's spicy. Oh, it's that great smoky flavor. Yeah. You did a great job, guys. Fish sausage, who knew? Something Americans might find mm -hmm. more familiar was dessert. That's a winner. <laughs> One gets the distinct impression Laroni's a man who's found his calling, not once, but twice in his lifetime. Is there another career that you're itching to get into? Not really. So I get to go and find new wine, new Ooh. food. So where does that take you? Well, I go around Spain a lot. I go to, I also get to go to Central America, anywhere with Spanish speaking. I can, can uh, write off as a business expense. <laughs> Think. You know, you and I think a lot. You got to make your life work. Up next, we visit a cook drawing on her Indian and Kenyan roots to create dishes she hopes nourishes and nurtures her diners. Ravinder Bogle's vegetarian cookbook, Comfort and Joy, pays homage to her grandfather's appreciation of vegetables. And her eatery, Jaconi, is inspired by the women who raised her. MTS Tayab got a seat at the table. Jaconi is one of the most exciting, innovative, and down-to-earth eateries in London's eclectic Marlebone area. I always wanted a restaurant where I had regulars, you know, I knew the names of people coming in, what their dogs are called, what they <laughs> like to eat, how they like their gin and tonic fix. That was kind of the dream. A dream willed into reality by the Kenyan-born and London-raised Ravinder Bogle. And then I'm just going to garnish it with a little bit more corn. Just don't call her a chef. You say you're not a chef, you're a cook. Yeah. Why do you make that distinction? The reason I cook is I want to nurture and nourish the people who come in. The word restaurant means to restore, and we feel very much if you're not restoring the people who come in through your doors, you're not doing your job. Bogle restores her diners by cooking with fresh, locally sourced, British-grown ingredients, earning Jaconi the title as one of the UK's first carbon-neutral restaurants. But make no mistakes, the flavors here are truly global. This idea of authenticity and staying in your lane and, oh, you know, if you're a brown girl, you fit in this box and you're going to cook this kind of food. I think Jaconi, in a way, was my subconscious answer to that. Jaconi has remained a fixture on best restaurants list with its ever-changing and always seasonal menu, something Bogle proudly describes as immigrant food. Like this fusion of English, Chinese and Filipino flavors that's crunchy on the outside and gooey in the middle. This is a signature. This is the prawn toast scotch egg with banana ketchup and pickled cucumber. Then there's her hot and sour sweet corn risotto. So all the sort of... Which fuses Italian cooking technique... Let's give it a try. <laughs> ...with Thai flavors. It's a risotto that transports me to Bangkok. Yeah. Other favorites are the crispy eggplant with Sichuan caramel. Oh, you can really taste the Sichuan here as well. Yeah, <laughs> that little tingle that comes yeah. up on you. <laughs> it's actually kind of fun. And the surprisingly hearty peaches with tofu and Thai basil remelada. Then there's the soy gima bun, topped with an apple relish infused with Indian pickling spices. Thank you. Bite into that. It's almost like a sloppy joe, you know? Yeah. Does it remind this you of reminds me of the, the kima or the mints that my mom would make. I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> and I've done my job. I've done my job. Because that's what we do here. We're a maternal kitchen. Yeah. A maternal kitchen, or jaconi, inspired by the women who raised Bogle. I think I come from a line of very marginalized women who were basically told, like I was, you will cook for your husband and your children and you don't go beyond that. And it's really important for me to tell the stories of those women, represent their food culture, represent their wisdom, because this is a platform I don't take lightly. Bogle's platform is only growing. As a journalist, she publishes articles and recipes in national newspapers and magazines. You heard it here first. <laughs> right. And, and then makes I'm frequent appearances on cooking shows. She's also the author of two cookbooks, including her latest, Comfort and Joy.
It is a love letter to my, um, you know, to vegetables and my grandfather. It's a vegetarian cookbook. Bogle's grandfather, who migrated from India to colonial era Kenya in the 1940s, found joy in farming the fertile soil there, something he passed on to her. His philosophy was that vegetables are like miracles because they face pests, blight and bad weather and yet they turn up to our kitchen, to our table and that in itself is a miracle. Bogle also works her magic with desserts like Giacconi's beloved banana cake with miso butterscotch and Ovaltine kulfi. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is sublime. <laughs> Thank you. I always know when I'm coming up the stairs when people are eating the banana cake because you hear these kind of sort of gratuitous grunts. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to be polite. For Ravinder Bogle, Jaconi isn't only a culinary passport that takes diners on a journey across continents with every mouthful, it's also a place where she can share her family's love of food and the Earth's bounty. What do you want people to feel when they walk through the doors of Jaconi, sit on this table with these beautiful tablecloths and are served this borderless food? I want them to feel right at home. The Sicily native and restaurateur behind La Mia Mama found himself homesick for his mother's cooking while living in the UK. So like any good son, he flew his mom to London. Now she and other Italian moms work there, whipping up authentic recipes with love. Here's Ian Lee. I'm not gonna ask you, I'm just gonna give you the frittata to try, okay? Yes. There's a good chance you're not eating enough. At least that's what the mamas at La Mia Mama will tell you. Prego. Oh, and they'll let you know. You have to eat. Manja. <laughs> You're going to hear that last word a lot. Manja, manja, manja. Manja. I learned this word. This is a very hard <laughs> manja. Manja. Manja means eat in Italian. It's part of our culture. It's part of our tradition. It's a part of our life. Italians without food, it's... Uh, I'm not sure they are Italians, actually. <laughs> I'm used to great foods coming from Sicily. For Italian Pepe Corsaro, while living in London, nothing could match his mom's good old home cooking. And one of my friends, he's just joking. He said, Pepe, why don't you bring your mama over to cook? And that was my... Your Eureka moment. Correct, exactly. That Eureka moment turned into La Mia Mama, a restaurant run by Italian moms. But for that idea to work, Pepe first had to call back home. So you call your mom, and what does she say? <laughs> I'm not joking. She was like, OK, listen, I found this ticket. I can come there. We're going to do the menu, and we're going to develop it. And that's how we all began. <laughs> not only did Pepe's mom, known as Mama Anna, come over, but his sister, Mama Sara, also joined. We're doing the fresh cavatelli pasta. This is a Sicilian pasta. It's very easy. Very easy. So you take a little piece of dough like this. Right. You put it in the bar. You just press a little bit and roll down. Show me. All right. Press a little bit yeah. and roll. You see? <laughs> it's a great job. You've done like an amazing job. Come on. This cavatelli pasta is being served with a pork cheek and pistachio pesto. Pesto, you start... Uh, Fresh pistachio, basil, not too much. We're going to put a few leaves just to give like a, a little bit of flavor. Salt, pepper, and sunflower oil. The dish may look simple, but it's simply delicious. Mm. That is so uh, good. Your face was talking already. Oh. But, oh, I didn't give you the pork. Chicken oh, side. You have oh, to try with the. Arm. I have yes. to try more. I'm sorry, <laughs> but you have to try one more. Now it's completed. It's like the whole recipe. Mm. Cooking good food was easy, mm. but they needed to fatten up the operation. How did you find the mamas? We put like a, um, a post on social media. We are recruiting like mamas. We don't want professional chefs. You want home cooking? That's what I want. Original home cook. Those home cooks first auditioned over the phone. We say, okay, come over, you do like um, a demonstration, you cook something for us, um, and then we start from there. Many mamas stay in an apartment together as they become paid professional chefs. Most of the mamas, uh, they were all housewives 
or they, they were doing a completely different job in Italy. So they're quite intimidating. But give them two, three days uh, and they loved it. At La Mia Mama, food is more than just something you eat. How do you want people to feel when they eat your food? First of all, we want them to feel happy, but then falling in love with that food. It's a romantic experience almost. It's Italian, we are romantic, yes. It's okay, mama? Yeah. Boss say it's okay. How is it working with your mother? Oh my God, at the beginning it was like, oh my God, now I cannot stay without her. Perfetta. It's a like dream that. came true, actually. It's amazing. It's a beautiful dream. It's a beautiful dream, yes. After the break, we visit a chef who fuses the cuisine of Ghana with other traditional African dishes. This South London chef and radio host adds a modern take to the traditional flavors of his Ghanaian heritage. He told our MTS Tayat that his food is designed to evoke both familiarity and excitement. It's considered one of the most exciting and innovative kitchens in London. Bringing the flavors of Africa to some of the world's most discerning diners. I have fun saying crisps. Akwazi Brenyamensa is the brains behind Tatale, which is named after a Ghanaian plantain pancake. I wanted it to be aligned with um, plantain. Plantain? Yeah, absolutely. You know, whether it's back home, whether it's in the States, whether it's in South America, you know, whether it's, you know, black people that live in Iran, like, plantain is in everyone's cuisine. And that's what Tatale is about. Hi, Mom, you're on camera. What's my mom? Taking the food his Ghanaian mother would cook for him as a child and broadening it to include global African influences. In you're from South London, mm -hmm. you're a Londoner, but your family's food tradition is so Ghanaian. My parents were very, very stern about the fact that we were Ghanaian. So, as an example, we weren't allowed to speak English in the home. Wow. I think it's probably as I got older that I probably considered um, the duality to my identity. A duality that led Brenya Mensa to a career in food. In 2015, he noticed the surge in popularity of gourmet burgers across London and started his first pop-up in his university town of Sheffield, which grew to feeding music lovers at the Glastonbury Festival. But Tatale is major, winning rave reviews for its painstakingly precise menu that's nearly all vegan like the black-eyed bean hummus with red palm oil and duca, inspired by a trip to Tel Aviv. One thing that stuck out to me, you know, especially as a West African or as a Ghanaian, is that black-eyed beans are used extensively in a lot of our dishes. Ultimately, that's how we got to this hummus. It's really amazing. Thank and it's also much. really smooth as well. I would think with black-eyed beans, it maybe have a bit of grit to it. One of the tricks that I was shown was, you know, using the residue water from the beans ah. um, to kind of like smooth it out. Another dish where black-eyed beans are the star is Tatale's signature menu item. So red red is, um, again, a very traditional Ghanaian dish. It is a... Um, it's called red red. That's it, yeah. It's um, a black-eyed bean stew made with tomatoes, onions, ginger, garlic, um, but most notably red palm oil. Brenya Mensa has taken out the traditional fish accompaniment and uses fermented locust bean instead. That dish to me is tied to my mum's kitchen and tied to growing up. And you know, my mum's kitchen was like the CEO's office. It's more than taste. To me, that, in fact, dish is time travel because at any point at which I have it, you know, I'm transported to being in the kitchen with my mum, so. And if you do want to transcend time, she sat in her own mum's kitchen eating the very same dish. Yeah, absolutely. And on and on and on. Exactly, yeah. Brenya Mensa is a self-described African futurist. Alongside his own radio show, his interest in science, technology and art informs everything he creates. Tatale's location is also rooted in its food ethos, nestled inside the newly relocated Africa Center a vital hub of political and cultural activity for London's African diaspora dating back to the 1960s. A phrase that keeps coming up is sort of pan-African. Mm -hmm. What does that mean to you? To me, pan-African means black. And so when I talk about it being a pan-African concept, 
I'm talking about it being a black concept. Um, so for you, Pan-African isn't just the 54 countries of the continent of Africa. It is black people everywhere. Absolutely. And you put that in your dishes. Dishes which excite as much as they inspire. Everything you've served here has been really approachable and really flavorful. Is that what you want people to, to feel when they come yeah, in? Yeah, absolutely. And if you are not so familiar with this cuisine or these types of ingredients and come away having enjoyed it, fantastic. Come back. And yeah, absolutely, please do. <laughs> but if you are familiar or you have some experience and you try something and it ignites some memory or takes you somewhere else, then I'd be thrilled. For more stories like these and live coverage of breaking news, stream us right here on CBS News 24-7. I'm Michelle Miller. We'll see you next time for another helping of The Dish.